चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की ब्रज भूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की गंगामय की यमुनामय की भक्ति देवी की तुलसी देवी की कलियुगोपावन हरिणाम संकीर्तन की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो 5 चैप्टर 5 टेक्स्ट नंबर 1 ऋषभ उवाच नायम देहो देह भाजां त्रिलोके कष्टान का मान अर्हते विभुजाम्ये तपो दिव्यं पुत्र काये न सत्वं शुद्धेद्यस्माद् ब्रह्मसौख्यं त्वनंतं नायं देहो देह भाजां त्रिलोके कष्टान का मानर हते विभुजाम ये तपोदिव्यं पुत्र का ये न सत्वं शुद्धेद्यस्माद् ब्रह्मसौख्यं त्वनंतं कष्टांतमानर्हते <laughs> मत मत आनंदे 
Matages. Kapodinyam putra kaya na satvam Rishabha uvacha Dr. Shubhadev said Na, not, I am, this, deha, body, deha bhajam Of all living entities who have accepted material bodies Drilloke in this world, Kashtan, troublesome, troublesome. <laughs> Kaman, sense gratification. Arhate, deserves. Vidhujam, of stool eaters. Ye, which, tapaha. Austerities and penances, Divyam, Divine, Putrakaha, my dear sons, Yena, by which Sattvam, the heart, Shuddhyet, becomes purified, Yesmat, from which Brahma Saukhyam, spiritual happiness, to Certainly. Anantam, an ending. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace is Tivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Lord Rishabhadeva told his sons, my dear boys, of all living entities who have accepted material bodies in this world, one who has been awarded this human form should not work hard and day and night simply for sense gratification which is available even for dogs and hogs that eat stool. One should engage in penance and austerity to attain the divine position of devotional service. By such activity, one's heart is purified. And when one attains his position, he attains eternal blissful life, which is transcendental to material happiness and which continues forever. Purport. In this verse, Lord Rishabhadeva tells his sons about the importance of human life. The word Dehabhat refers to anyone who accepts a material body, but the living entity who is awarded the human form must act differently from animals. Animals like dogs and hogs enjoy sense gratification by eating stool. After undergoing several severe hardships all day, Human beings are trying to enjoy themselves at night by sleeping, eating, drinking, uh, having sex and sleeping. At the same time, they have to properly defend themselves. However, this is not human civilization. Human life means voluntarily practicing suffering for the advancement of spiritual life. There is, of course, suffering in the lives of animals and plants which are suffering due to their past mistakes. However, human beings should voluntarily accept suffering in the form of austerities and penances in order to attain the divine life. After attaining the divine life, one can enjoy happiness eternally. After all, every living entity is trying to enjoy happiness, but as long as one is encased in the material body, he has to suffer different kinds of misery. A higher sense is present in the human form. We should act according to superior advice in order to attain eternal happiness and go back to Godhead. It's a long purport. Is it okay? It's okay. Yeah, please. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. So very fortunate to have His Grace Varang Dashin Prabhu here with us. 
minutes i'll just give a small introduction so <clears throat> i remember our bhakti vibha classes uh, when we were doing vidya peetha we were taking by his grace gorang darshan prabhu so <clears throat> so sapoji so holds the master sapoji so is from bang he studied in bangalore iisc and that's where he became krishna's devotee he got attracted to krishna's photo and slowly slowly start coming to the temple and you can do it and then later probably joined iskon chapati there and from there he was when gv was in initial stage goes on eco village there it was all mud and dust nothing the building structure so that time the team of devotees and probably uh, under the guidance of gorang kuvar sent to gv wala and had lot of hard struggles there and probably was given the seva of uh vidya peetha to establish the uh, bhakti danta vidya peetha and establish education institute and that's the time gv i think 2011 or 2010 2010 they started this vidya peetha the studying of 2012 2012 they started the vidya peetha and there uh, the whole study of bhakti shastri bhakti vaiva bhakti vedanta bhakti sarbhama combined everything in a package of 2 years time and pravati was heading uh, is heading that department and even percentage like his grace rashampu went to do vidya peetham in wala and then it afterwards it became very famous and many many temples pravati would travel to kanpur hyderabad to kolkata to pune to take many sections of shrimad bhagavatam for us and and anybody here yeah. shrimad bhagavatam from him gets into you know love with shrimad bhagavatam he has so much uh, the taste and during covid time so probably gave so many lectures much in the bhagavat prabha series so many series and is writer of more than 35 books <laughs> and including the subodhani so very very grateful to prabhu ji for giving the subodhani because even in learning bhakt, uh, bhakti vaiva or bhagavatam or teaching bhakti uh, vaiva it becomes very easy because of prabhu ji's subodhani the way it is come up and prabhu ji also writing many children books and that's why he has come here tomorrow at the children event call uh with that's many many children those project writing so very fortunate to hear from him and not take much time so let's welcome him one time chanting hare krishna mahamantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 krishna hare 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 krishna hare Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I offer my humble obeisances to all the devotees at Iskon, Bangalore, Seshadri Puram. I used to come here as a student from my college, IIC. At that time, the temple was smaller, um, but now it has become very big. Last year also I came here. Uh, very happy to. be amongst all of you today once again today i was asked to speak on the teachings of lord rishabhadev and we just read the first shloka nayam deho deha bhajam ruloke kashtan kama narhate vibhujamye tapo divyam putra ka yena sattvam shuddhye yasmad brahma sokhyam tanantam i offer my humble obeisances to bhakti vinod prabhu hari hari who is always affectionate <laughs> Lord Rishabhadev appeared as the son of Nabhi Maharaj and Meru Devi and right from his childhood uh, he exhibited the symptoms of godhead and Prabhupada writes in one of this purport that an incarnation of the supreme lord must be ascertained according to the symptoms that the personality exhibits rather than popular voting so <laughs> rishabhadev is the incarnation of the lord because nabhi maharaj and meru devi they conducted a sacrifice to get a son as good as the supreme lord and there are some vaishnava priests who conducted the sacrifice and being very impressed with the devotion of nabhi maharaj and also the way 
the Vaishnava priest conducted the sacrifice, the Supreme Lord Vishnu came on the back of Garuda, descended in front of Nabi Maharaj, impressed with his devotion. Then the sages or the priests uh, spoke about the desire of Nabi Maharaj. The purpose of the sacrifice was to get a son as good as the Supreme Lord. Initially, it was criticized as a material desire. Sometimes people may want the prestige of being connected to a great person. Sometimes uh, even devotees may aspire to um, be in a great position or very, very close to the Supreme Lord. Um, the, uh, one part of the desire is to serve the Lord, but another part of the desire could be to have that prestige or uh, privilege of being so closely connected. So that's why Nabi Maharaj's desire to have a son as good as the Supreme Lord was criticized by the priest as a material desire. And they spoke to the Lord. Oh Lord, we are very sorry. Please excuse us for inviting you for this materially motivated sacrifice. What is that materially motivated sacrifice? To get a son for Nabi Maharaj as good as Lord Vishnu. <laughs> but Lord Vishnu said, <laughs> but uh, there is a problem. There is no one as good as me. So I will only become his son. <laughs> the Lord incarnated as Rishabhadev and became the son of Nabi and Nirudev. But after some time, this Nabi Maharaj who wanted the privileged position of being the father of the Lord and that desire is criticized as material desire by the priest. Now he started developing Vatsalya affection for the Lord. He, went, he entered Vatsalya Bhav. You see, although sometimes one may approach the Lord with a material desire, somehow or the other being connected with the Lord will transform one's heart. Dhruva Maharaj is a classical example. Dhruva Maharaj approached the Lord with a desire, with a material ambition to attain a position superior to his great grandfather Brahma. But within six months, there's a transformation in his heart. He never wanted, and after the six months of Tapasya chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Dhruva Maharaj never wanted to. Uh, attain a position superior to Brahma. He never wanted to take revenge on his stepmother, Suruchi. He gave up all envy towards his stepbrother, Uttama. He did not desire to sit on his father's lap or father's throne anymore. You see, all the negativity in his heart has been eradicated. So the lesson here is, from the example of Dhruva or Nabi, is that even if you connect with the Lord with a material desire at some point of time, at some stage or phase of your spiritual life, even if you connect with the Lord with a material desire, if you practice bhakti sincerely, the material desires are eradicated. Performing bhakti with material desires in the heart is called sakama karma, sakama bhakti. But that sakama tendencies in one's bhakti will be eradicated when you practice bhakti sincerely. And Krishna will remove sakama and retain bhakti. So sakama bhakti is not an eternal uh, mentality of a devotee. <laughs> sakama bhakti is just a phase. Krishna will ensure that sakama will disappear and bhakti will remain. So in the case of Nabi Maharaj, Although he had quote unquote material desire to have a son as good as the Supreme Lord, when the Lord appeared as his son, Rishabhadev, out of his intense affection for his son, Nabi Maharaj became a Vatsalya Bhakta or a devotee who has parental affection for the Lord. He, he attained Vatsalya Rasa. So, this is the glory of Bhakti Yoga. That's why Bhagavatam says, Akama Hasarva Kamova Moksha Kama Udara Dhihi 
तीव्रेण भक्ति योगी न यजेत पुरुषम परम अकाम हम सर्व काम होवा इवन इफ यू डोंट हैव एनी मटेरियल डिजायर और इवन इफ यू हैव हंड्रेड्स ऑफ मटेरियल डिजायर मोक्ष काम और इवन इफ यू आर स्पेसिफिकली डिजायरिंग फॉर लिबरेशन तीव्रेण भक्ति योगी न यजेत पुरुषम परम प्लीज परफॉर्म इंटेंस भक्ति अन टू दैट परम पुरुष कृष्ण सो भक्ति इज अ वेरी अकोमोडेटिव प्रोसेस भक्ति कैन अकोमोडेट जय जगन्नाथ बल्ले सुभद्र मैया की जय सो भक्ति इज एन अकोमोडेटिव प्रोसेस इट कैन अकोमोडेट पीपल फ्रॉम मल्टीपल बैकग्राउंड भागवतम इज फिल्ड विथ स्टोरीज ऑफ डिवोटीज who are coming from different different backgrounds bhagavatam talks about great sages like vyasadeva narada muni great kings like ambrish maharaj prithu maharaj dhruva maharaj parikshit maharaj yudhishthir maharaj bhagavatam also talks about glorious women like uttara kunti mata draupadi devaki mata Yashoda Mata. Bhagavatam also talks about little children, like Prahlad Maharaj, Dharva Maharaj, Uddhava is a child, Parikshita is a child. <laughs> Bhagavatam presents the stories of devotees from different different backgrounds. Bhagavatam also talks about demons who became devotees, <laughs> like Bali Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, Vritrasur. They were all demons. By birth, they were demons. but not by mentality so anyone from any background can become a devotee so coming to rishabhadev's case so when rishabhadev appeared as the son of nabhi and meru devi nabhi maharaj became a pure devotee with vatsalya feelings eventually nabhi maharaj retired from his kingdom he enthroned rishabhadev as the king this is the example set by so many rajarshis Rajarshi means he is a raja, but as good as a rishi. He is a saint among kings. He is a saintly king. So all these saintly kings, whose stories are described in Shrimad Bhagavatam, they rule the kingdom with responsibility and they retire with a spirit of renunciation. As long as they are in the post. in that position they may have access to different privileges but they don't get attached to those privileges having access to certain privileges and facilities and opulences is at one level being so attached to them and identifying oneself with them is on another level so all these great rajarshis although they played the roles as the rulers they are never attached to their positions or privileges they are so pure hearted uh, they are like boats traveling in a river or in an ocean they are in the water water is not inside them <laughs> best example is janaka maharaj <laughs> and many other kings all these maharajas chakravartis <clears throat> although they are emits so many opulences so many ministers and soldiers and uh, big big Uh, uh, treasuries are there under their control. Still, they are never attached to any of them. They are simply attached to the process of devotional service. Mm-hmm. And as soon as there is an able successor, they immediately give charge of the kingdom to the successor, and they retire to perform full-time devotional service. <coughs> the success of a leader is in creating successors also. one may effectively lead that's great amazing but how many leaders have you created hmm. how many leaders have you empowered that also is a parameter of course not everyone can become a leader of leaders that's fine <laughs> uh, but we are talking about the based on prabhupad's uh, pur- purports we are talking about certain mentality in people who want to hold on to their positions till the fag end of their lives 
especially in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam prabhupada repeatedly mentions that some people want to hold on to their positions and power till the fag end of their lives uh, but we have seen the examples of so many rajarshis like parikshit maharaj or dharva maharaj or here nabhi maharaj before him priyavrat maharaj um, and rishabhadev also then later bharat maharaj also so all these great maharajas devotees they ruled with responsibility and they retired with detachment as soon as there is an able successor who can take over who can do the service effectively then they retire right so navi maharaj retired then rishabhadev took over he became the king of this bharat varsha then then rishabhadev uh, ruled with responsibility as usual as his ancestors did and he gave birth to he became the father of 100 sons there were 100 sons of this kshatriya king rishabhadev who is also an incarnation of the lord but all 100 are not kshatriyas rishabhadev's sons were of different ashrams <laughs> uh, different varanas 81 sons of rishabhadev became perfectly qualified brahmanas and nine of them became navayogendras we can't fit them into any particular varna ashram <laughs> they are transcendental <laughs> they are totally transcendental they are navayogendras they travel at their own will they are very exalted paramahamsas then only 10 of them 10% of his <laughs> children were kshatriyas right out of the 10 the first one was bharat maharaj hmm. so he had 100 sons and 10 only became kshatriyas and 81 became brahmanas 9 became paramahamsas so this is rishabhadev's family as krishna said in the bhagavad gita chatur varanyam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagashah guna karma vibhagashah the person is qualified as a brahmana or a kshatriya or a vaishya or a shudra according to the gunas and varana gunas and uh, karmas guna means quality karma means activity now guna can have two meanings from one perspective guna is sattva gun raja gun tamo gun the three modes of material nature from another perspective guna can refer to the qualities like humility truthfulness all that so brahmanas gunas qualities are uh they are truthful they are very honest they are very learned they are very compassionate they are not greedy for position or name fame prestige uh, so the satisfaction so these are all the qualities of brahmanas kshatriyas they are very courageous very resourceful uh, very authoritative uh, they can fight manage administer things so they are their qualities and uh, they similarly other varnas have their own qualities now from another angle gunas are satvardhi stambha gunas right brahmanas are those people who are predominantly in sattva guna with rajoguna as a secondary mode kshatriyas are those people who have rajoguna as the primary mode and sattva guna is a secondary mode vaishyas are those people who are prominently in rajoguna with tamo guna as a secondary mode and shudras are those people who are prominently in tamogun with rajogun as a secondary mode thus from guna perspective uh, the human beings are qualified in are are categorized as different varanas then karma activities right you know i will not get into all the details uh, so vaishyas are more mostly into krishi goraksha vanijam and all that so now rishabhadev's family although by birth all of them are kshatriyas but by activities and by qualities they are of different different varnas hmm? now rishabhadev not only ruled the kingdom righteously not only became the father of 100 sons he also trained the sons a father is supposed to train the children parents are supposed to train the children and uh, teachers are supposed to train the students guru is supposed to train the disciples so rishabhadev is training 
so that's the context of this particular shloka that we just recited where rishabhadev began his teachings to his uh, hundred sons and the foremost of the hundred sons was Rishab, uh, bharat maharaj and in the fifth canto of bhagavatam only later something interesting is mentioned about lord ramachandra मर्त्यावतार स्वीह मर्त्य शिक्षण रक्षोवधाय रक्षोवधाय वनते केवल विभो मर्त्यावतार स्तु इह मर्त्य शिक्षण मर्त्य अवतार मीन्स इनकारनेशन इज अूमन बीइंग मर्त्य मृति मीन्स डेथ मर्त्य मीन्स दैट विच इज सब्जेक्टेड टू डेथ ए ह्यूमन बीइंग और एनी लिविंग बीइंग एम्बॉडीड बीइंग इन दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड इज सब्जेक्टेड टू डेथ right so martyavatar means the lord descends in this martya loka descends in this material world where death is inevitable he also descends as a human being in this world apparently taking birth apparently concluding his pastime which is not exactly death but he he takes birth in this martya loka incarnates in this martya loka martyavatar why does the lord appear as a human being in this world he ham martya shikshanam to give shikshan to give training to all the other human beings he becomes a human being and he trains other human beings as lord ramachandra he descended as a human being as a human king in this material world in ayodhya and then he set a great example for all the other human beings how to be a good son how to be an ideal son how to be an ideal brother ideal uh, father ideal king ideal husband ideal uh, uh, brother so he sets it in ideals standards and he is personally teaching by his example yadyadacharati shreshtas tatta devet rojanah sayat pramanam kurute lokas tadanuvartate whatever great people follow common people also tend to follow the same thing now here rishabhadev is saying uh, he is giving teachings to his sons he says नायम देहो देह भाजा मृलोके कष्टान कामान अर्हते विभुजा न अयम देहो देह भाजा मृलोके दिस देह दिस मटीरियल बॉडी देह भाजा मृलोके कष्टान कामान अर्हते विभुजा दिस ह्यूमन बॉडी इज नॉट मेंट टू एक्सपीरियंस डिफिकल्टीज कष्टान कामान बिकॉज ऑफ काम देर इज कष्ट many people don't understand this why i am undergoing difficulties because of my desires desires lead to difficulties kashtan kama there is no kama there is no kashta <laughs> if there is no desire there is no difficulty you want another proof go to pingala gita as a part of uddhav gita krishna speaks so many songs sung by different personalities <laughs> one is aila gita song sung by pururav another is bhikshu gita song sung by avanti brahman another is pingala gita song sung by prostitute pingala she says aasha hi paramam dukham nairasyam paramam sukham <laughs> right aasha hope desire expectation this will happen this is going to happen so this kind of aasha is paramam dukham you are expecting something from people or something from this world something from different situations and you may not get it most of the times you will not get it sometimes you may get but most of the times you will not get it so such undue expectations will lead to frustration but if you regulate your expectations uh, if you keep a limit for your expectation or hope or uh, or uh, desire asha then we can avoid frustration and we can be grateful if you expect something from somebody and if they don't help you you'll get frustrated if you don't expect any help from someone still if they help you even slightly you'll be grateful so whether you want to be grateful in life or frustrated in life it's in your hands you can just adjust your expectations and embrace gratitude or embrace frustration right so asha hi param dukham even kunti mata says that 
भवेस्मिन् क्लिश्यमानानाम् अविद्या कामकर्मभि श्रवणस्मरणार्हाणि करिष्यन् इति केचन भवेस्मिन् क्लिश्यमानानाम् इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड सो मेनी पीपल आर अंडरगोइंग क्लिश्या क्लेशास मींस डिफिकल्टीज कष्टा आर क्लिश्यास इन बोथ आर सेम दे आर अंडरगोइंग डिफिकल्टीज व्हाई शी डज नॉट गिव ओनली वन रीजन शी गिव्स थ्री रीजंस हियर ही सेड कष्टान कामान Kashta is because of karma, but Kunti Maharani gives a little bigger cycle, bigger process there. She says, avidya kama karma bhi, that leads to klesha. Avidya means ignorance. That avidya leads to kama, material desires. And kama leads to karma, material actions. And that karma leads to klesha, that is material reactions in the form of difficulties. Avidya kama karma bhi. That leads to pleasure. Now, what is this avidya? Avidya means ignorance. Vidya is education, knowledge, awareness. Avidya means no knowledge, no awareness, ignorance, right? Foolishness. Avidya. So ignorance of what? What ignorance are we talking about when we say avidya? Ignorance of our real identity. As a servant of Krishna, that is the real avidya. I don't know how to use the smartphone. I don't know how to use this app. That is not a big avidya. <laughs> I don't know how to type this document. I don't know how to do this coding. That's fine. You may not be aware of so many things in this world. Fine. Everybody need not become or cannot become aware of everything. But the root meaning of avidya is ignorance of self identity. We are in ident may not be somehow by, somehow by proper grace we have become aware of our spiritual identities as servants of Krishna, <laughs> but most conditioned souls in this material world they have identity crisis. Every single living entity is a fragmental part of Krishna. Krishna himself says in the Bhagavad Gita, "Mamai vamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana." Mama Eva Amsho. All of you are my Amshas, Krishna says. That's our identity. But people don't understand this. Nayam Deho Deha Bhajam Raloki. In this material world, human beings, let's talk about human beings. So these people are not aware of their identity as servants of Krishna, as Amshas of Krishna. They identify themselves with their bodies, with their material bodies. That is the ignorance, that is avidya. Avidya is also called ahankar. Did you ever meditate on these two things? Ahankar means arrogance, pride. That's the general understanding. Avidya means ignorance, innocence, lack of knowledge. That's the general understanding. But these two are connected to each other. Avidya and ahankar, in essence, both are same. Ahankar means you are very proud of a identity that you have. But most people. They are proud of a false identity, right? You are not a king. You are proud that I am a king. See this. <laughs> there is ignorance, isn't it? So avidya means ignorance of your real identity. Ahankar means absorption in a new identity. What is ahankar? It is, <laughs> it is a sense of identity. Aham, me, right? Aham, I. So the iness, uh, me, meanness. So that is a sense of identity, but when we are uh, identifying ourselves with something which we are not, that is called false identity or false ego, right? Ego and ignorance both are same in that sense, right? So we, when we falsely identify ourselves as material bodies, or proprietors, controllers, masters, enjoyers in this material world, that is called ahankara. That is called avidya also. When you identify yourself as servant of Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna, amsha of Krishna, devotee of Krishna, that is a real identity. That is vidya. That is the real aham. Real aham. That is true ego. But the false ego is to identify oneself with something which we are not. That is avidya. So, kashtan kama na rahati vidhujamye. Why there is kashta? Because there is kama. Between kama and kashta, there is karma. As Kunti Marani says, avidya, kama, karma, kashta, four things. 
So all the conditioned soul, souls, because of avidya, because of their ignorance, avidya rahankar, they are equating both. So because of their avidya rahankar, they are having kama, material desires. And because of kama, they are doing karma, material activities. And because of material activities, karma, they are undergoing kashta, or klesha, material difficulties, reactions. So to cut this cycle, we need to do what? Tapo divyam putra kayena sattvam. He says, tapo divyam, do divya tapa. Not normal tapa. Many people have done tapa. But we need to do that tapa that counteracts tapa. You understand? Tapa means austerity. Tapa means misery. Your tapa should counteract tapa. Your tapa should not increase your tapa. <laughs> right? Hiranya Keshapu did tapa. Tapasya. So much tapasya he did. My God. Such intense tapasya, even half of his body was totally eaten by termites. Uh, his his rib case is seen. All the bones are seen. All the flesh disappeared because of uh, ants and insects eating his flesh. Blood and everything is disappeared. Only half of his body is there. And Brahma could not even recognize Hiranyakashpu when he came to give boons to Hiranyakashpu. Such intense tapasya he did. He had such intense sense control, mind control. An average Sadhaka also may not be able to exhibit such an intense austerity and mind control and sense control as Hiranyakashipu exhibited. Uh, but what is the use of the tapasya? He took some boons from, uh, from Narasam Hadev, which all of you know. No death inside a home or outside a home or on the land or in the sky, etc. etc. But after he received all the boons, he became a victim of uncontrolled senses. Intense degree of sense control before getting the boons, becoming a victim of senses after getting the boons. So this tapa, <laughs> this was so much of tapasya he did, uh, is totally useless. He is not relishing the tapasya. He just wants get, to get some benediction. All the sense control he exhibited is only to indulge in uncontrolled sense gratification. All the mind control he exhibited is only to become a victim of mind's desires, uncontrolled desires. So this kind of tapas is of no use. That's why he says, tapo divyam, divya tapa you do, transcendental austerities you do. What is transcendental austerity? That which connects you with Krishna. Not that which connects you with deeply with your senses and mind, which are ultimately material. Right? Aradhito yadi hari tapasatata kim, naradhito yadi hari tapasatata kim, antar bahir yadi hari tapasatata kim, nantar bahir yadi hari tapasatata kim. You know this? Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakurji says this. Aradhito yadi hari tapasatata kim. If you are doing aradhana of hari, if you are worshipping Lord Hari, what's the use of your tapas? And if you are not worshipping Hari, what's the use of tapasya? What is tapasya? Voluntarily accepting some inconvenience upon oneself. Voluntarily accepting inconvenience upon oneself is called tapasya or austerity. And that austerity is meaningful only when you are worshipping Krishna. And if you are worshipping Krishna sincerely, even if you are unable to do certain austerities, it's fine. Right? That's what he says. Aradhito yadi hari tapasata Narajito yadhiri tapasata takkim. Of course, we have to do some tapasya. That's what he's saying. Tapo divyam. But what kind of tapasya? Divya tapa. Transcendental austerities. What are transcendental austerities? That which can bring you closer to Krishna. If somebody follows Ekadeshi Vrata, which is recommended in our Vaishnava scriptures, okay, that can bring a connection between us and Krishna. Uh, but there are many other austerities for material purposes, like Hiranyakeshpur did austerities, Ravana did austerities, many other demons did austerities. But all of them are meant for just degrading one's uh, life. Let me tell you about one austerity done by a great demon named Vrikasar. <laughs> so Vrikasar wanted to get some desire. He wanted to attain some desire. He met Naradaman. Who is that God who is easily pleased so that I can fulfill my desire? The purpose is clear. Not to please the Lord. Not to please the person whom he is worshipping. Please oneself only. It's a self-centric tapasya. 
right there is no love for the person whom you are worshiping the narada muni said okay you worship shiva he is asutosha he is very easy to be pleased then rakasur started worshiping shiva he did tremendous amount of austerities as a part of his austerities he kept a sacrificial fire and he would cut some flesh from his body and then throw it in the fire right he would just pick up pick some flesh and then throw it in the fire austerity we can never imagine <laughs> uh, doing that austerity but he is doing that and he is so frustrated because shiva is not responding only to this austerity at one point he wanted to cut his head and then throw it in the sacrificial fire and he was about to cut his head shiva appeared from this sacrificial fire and said stop this nonsense what do you want <laughs> <laughs> then he said oh thank you for appearing in front of me finally if i put my hand on somebody's head he should be burned to ashes this is my desire see see what kind of desire he had <laughs> kashtan kaman <laughs> tapo divyam so this kind of tapa we don't want and shiva said okay fine he's obliged right okay take it he said rathastu then rakasar's next step is i want to put this hand on your head yes. to test whether your benediction works or not so we don't want this kind of austerities we don't want this kind of purposes in human life right tapo divyam putra kayena satvam that austerity that you perform in devotional service is also pleasure so we follow four regulatory principles it's pleasure right we can avoid so many difficulties by regulating ourselves by following the four regulatory principles propa says that regul these are regulative principles but these are regulative principles of freedom generally regulation and freedom are opposite in nature right if you want freedom you should not be regulated if you are regulated you have no freedom but proper says regulative principles of freedom <laughs> you understand this <laughs> regulative principles of freedom because ultimately all this regulation or restriction or austerity will free you from the clutches of maya daivi hesha godamayi mama maya duratyaya mame vaye prapadyante maya metam tarantite so we are constantly bound by this maya and we will be relieved from this maya released from this maya influence of uh, illusory energy when we accept the devotional austerities to please krishna take shelter of krishna while taking shelter of krishna you may have to sit in you may have to follow sit in policies and protocols and prescriptions and prohibitions a prescription is get up early in the morning chant 16 rounds even if you are getting sleep in the japa still continue to chant 16 rounds some austerity is there right eat this kind of foods only and uh, offer the food before eating so these are all joyful austerities these are not painful austerities so tapo divyam putra kayena satvam shuddhe dhyasma brahma saukhyam tanantam so when you perform this kind of divine austerities devotional austerities then heart will be purified shuddhe uh-huh. dhyasmat then brahma saukhyam to anantam brahma saukhyam means we'll get spiritual happiness now that brahma saukhyam can be seen in two different ways for impersonalists brahma saukhyam is merging into brahma jyoti the impersonal effulgence of the lord but for devotees brahma saukhyam is spiritual happiness ultimately the word brahman brahma means spiritual brahma saukhyam means spiritual happiness the happiness of devotional service the happiness of being in a spiritual relationship with krishna that's the happiness that devotees aspire for right impersonalists also may do some kind of transcendental austerities and they attain brahma jyoti but personalists devotees do divine austerities as a part of krishna's service and attain krishna right this can be interpreted in two ways proper rights in the purport right but one more point vidbhujam ye vidbhujam ye means uh, the so called enjoyment of senses is available for hogs and dogs more uh, don't aspire for that proposes eating sleeping mating defending ahara nidra bhai maithunancha samanyamaitah pasubharnaranam 
धर्मो ही तेशा अधिको विशेषो धर्मेण ही कहा पशु भी समान है तो दिस ईटिंग स्लीपिंग मेटिंग डिफेंडिंग एंड सो कॉल्ड प्लेजर अवेलेबल इन दिस एक्टिविटीज बेसिक एक्टिविटीज इज अवेलेबल फॉर ऑल स्पीशीज वॉट इज सो स्पेशल अबाउट ह्यूमन बींग ह्यूमन बींग शुड एक्सेस समथिंग मोर देन दैट नॉट स्टिक टू ओनली दैट लिटिल लिटिल मीगर अमाउंट ऑफ हैप्पीनेस सो इन दिस वे ऋषभदेव is giving his first teaching to meditate little deeper on this uh, the last statement that we read from purport a higher sense is present in the human form we should act according to superior advice in order to attain eternal happiness and go back to god head now what is the divya tapa what is that uh, divine austerity that enables us to enter the spiritual realm now we discussed the don'ts part following four regulatory principles getting up early in the morning doing ekadashi vrata this and that fine but there are it's not about restriction only it is not about prohibition only it's not about don'ts only there is much more happiness positive happiness that a devotee experiences in chanting the holy names of the lord in hearing krishna katha let's talk about the pleasure part of this austerity austerity means voluntarily accepting inconveniences for a higher purpose so in this inconvenience in this so called inconvenience or austerity or divya tapa there is great ecstasy and by doing this austerity while we are in the material bodies we are trying to prepare ourselves for the divine ecstasy in spiritual bodies what is the divine ecstasy in bhakti yoga तुंडे तांडवीरतिमृतृष्णेतिवर्णद्वयीलबलिवर्णद्वयीदी and we are chanting those names how much happiness spiritual happiness that the devotee experiences in the heart we may not be able to experience that at this moment that's fine keep practicing when you are not happy while doing an activity still if you are doing that activity as a part of obligation or practice or commitment or promise that you have given whatever it is you are doing that activity all they are not happy but because the activity in itself has the potential to give you happiness all they are unable to access that happiness today tomorrow will i actually experience that so let's continue that's the point as mahaprabhu said nam nam akari udhani ja sarva shakti tatra arpita niyamita smarane nakala nam nam akari udhani ja sarva shakti means holy names of krishna are very powerful shakti they have a shakti the name of krishna is powerful first point second tatrarpita niyamita smarane na kala there are no hard and fast rules to chant this time only you have to chant morning only you should chant evening only you should chant midnight you cannot chant midday you cannot chant no such rules holy name is accessible at any time holy name is powerful holy name is accessible the third is तत्रपिता निमित स्मरण काल एक तव कृपा भगवन् ममी तव कृपा द लॉर्ड इज सो मेरसीफुल इन हिस् फॉम होली नेम सो द्री क्वालिटी ऑफ द होली नेम मेन्शन इन दिस श्लोक बै लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु आर नंबर वन होली नेम इज पवर्फुल होली नेम इज एक्सेबल होली नेम इज मेरसीफुल पवर्फुल एक्सेबल एंड मेरसीफुल होली नेम वी आर एनेबल टू रिलेश एग्जांपल jandis <laughs> uh, you are unable to relish sugar cane juice what's the solution keep drinking 
keep drinking <laughs> then one day you'll relish it your disease will go away similarly we are unable to relish the holy name keep keep chanting keep chanting all they are not happy chanting keep chanting all they are not happy chanting the holy names of the lord still as an austerity all that is inconvenience to you you are chanting keeping your commitment of 16 rounds krishna will recognize it oh my god all that is very difficult for this devotee he is trying to do it all that is unable to relish it he is doing it let me give him some taste let me make him relish this chanting so taste is provided by krishna seeing our commitment seeing our consistency some people say if i chant i will chant with full absorption otherwise i will not chant <laughs> what's the point of chanting 16 rounds without absorption fine absorption will not come overnight by the way <laughs> keep chanting one day it will come <laughs> that krishna will give you seeing your consistency and commitment so what is in your hands you do that what is in krishna's hands he will bestow whenever he thinks you are qualified or you are ready for it uh, so let's let's do it so this is the divya tapa means it's transcendental austerity you are doing austerity definitely but that austerity or inconvenience is leading you to a higher realm where you can access ecstasy so it is also sukham kartum avyayam at the end of the day so rupa goswami says that when i am chanting the names of the lord oh, it's 98 oh, what's the time when, when till what time should we 9 is the ending right 9:30 okay you are giving some concession <laughs> for me okay. i will just take few minutes and complete the point so there is no end to this discussion by the way okay. <laughs> there is no end to my classes i will have to end when the time ends that's all <laughs> so uh, where were we uh huh rupa goswami says that when i chant the names of krishna i feel like having millions of tongues when i hear the name krishna i feel like having millions of years not that he wants to compete with indra indra has thousand eyes i need thousand years <laughs> that's not his point he is so eager to hear and chant krishna's names that out of his intense eagerness he is desiring millions of these organs sense organs that can relish that name so that eagerness we should also have we can also have it's there within our capacity because we are souls right we are Uh, we are made from krishna uh, made in india made in china they right right uh, our make is spiritual make not uh, material make so krishna we are krishna's amshas so being amshas of krishna we have that potential we have that ability the whole process of bhakti yoga or this divya tapa that we are doing is meant to make us access that potential to relish the most accessible and most merciful and most powerful krishna's name right so this will make us access that power of krishna's name so we have that potential the tapo divyam is meant to help us attain that potential mm-hmm. so madhura madhura meetan mangalam mangalana holy name of the lord is extremely sweet but it's it's tasting bitter for us because of anarthas so we can destroy the anarthas and destroy all the unwanted miseries within our heart by doing this to power divya so i will conclude here uh, evening we'll discuss more right that's an bharat maharaj episode right so i don't want to delay your breakfast uh, thank you very much grantara shrimad bhagavatam ki jay shri lal prabhu parant ki jay any questions or comments <coughs> Like a, like a, I ask question in the class. Prabhupada's books. The books created a revolution. Sitting in that IAC hostel, I was reading On the Way to Krishna, Science of Self-Realization, A Second Chance, <laughs> Coming Back, 
and eventually i came to bhagavad gita as it is so propads um uh, books and his lucid explanations made a deep impact on my heart did you only read or memorize i never uh, put an effort to memorize things and i also feel that artificially memorizing things will not work so much you need to like it then you will remember it so unless you have a liking for it unless you genuinely appreciate it and relish it artificially keeping something in memory will not last for long now in iisc i studied many books i wrote so many papers <laughs> they are published in international conferences also i don't remember even the titles of the papers now <laughs> honestly speaking i didn't relish i did as a duty but <laughs> so i could relish this so when you relish you will remember uh, i don't insist on memorization but i recommend internalization meditation absorption liking it if you like it then you'll remember it right you like these books either for their meaning or melody the shlokas are there you like the shloka either for their meaning or melody or meter something should hook you so then when you relish it you will remember it so yeah i like the philosophy i can't say that i'm relishing it or i'm absorbed and all that but definitely i appreciated it because i appreciated it i could remember it my remembrance is based on appreciation rather than memorization <laughs> right hari krishna any other question so in case of nadi nadi so i said that it's a matter of asking the doctor to have some like the doctor and to explain the what is it <laughs> could be it's it's a possibility definitely uh, ultimately whenever the lord wants to descend <laughs> he may use some of his devotees as instruments uh, but sometimes the lord may manifest even through the natural desire of a conditioned soul also right so the lord can hypnotize or whatever <laughs> use someone as an instrument uh, and make them do what he wants them to do and the lord will allow people to do what they naturally do and then through that also he can appear right <laughs> does it answer your question okay then anyway, mata ji this prabhu actually i my question was really about the that you know the radiation once he leaves he doesn't think about it gets detached from it and how most of the key facts in that example and we need to practice with you know that that we we do my go so one thing is uh, you know giving up giving up going to the other place but uh, always the possibility So we may look externally, mm. but after that, when we see the things that are happening there, may not go as well. We may think, if I would be there, they would be going. That to come out of that, when we look. Mm. Sorry, I couldn't follow the last point. So as I said, like say, we we delegate the thing and push ahead, mm. and we know it has. But when we see, when we believe that, have no intention that things should go. There is detachment there. <laughs> if you delegate and you are, you expect that it has to happen this way only then you are attached to the outcome <laughs> okay anyways it's not wrong basically detachment does not mean irresponsibility okay and responsibility does not mean attachment we need to have a combination of detachment and responsibility you delegate more than delegation you empower people there is a difference between delegation and empowerment you know delegation means i use my head 
you use your hand right it should go my way and you just participate in what i envisioned that is delegation empowerment means i want you to grow and here is an opportunity to serve krishna and by doing this service you please grow and i am your well wisher because i am facilitating this opportunity for you so that is empowerment so let's transform this art this this delegation into empowerment of course sometimes you have to delegate sometimes you have to use your head and use other person's hand when their head is not so developed <laughs> right uh, because you have a vision like you may am point a labor or construction uh, people huh? so you are envisioning the building <laughs> right you can say i have empowered this building <laughs> you build the way you want the temple <laughs> not that way that's that's delegation delegation has its role but when you are dealing with uh, you know devotees you want them to grow uh, you want them to flourish do it as a well wisher not as micromanager so this micromanagement is another uh, uh, another form of controllership inspire don't impose care for them don't control as a part of care there is a control a child is just going here and there father will say or mother will say hey come here don't go there it's a control but it's a care so we need to see, understand the subtle line between care and control <laughs> delegation and empowerment and all that yeah in some context delegation has its role to play but when you are dealing with uh, you know devotees or successors we are talking about leadership and success plan, succession planning right their empowerment is what uh, comes into picture so when you are krishna also does this he gives facility he gives knowledge he gives inspiration he gives his teachings and he gives freedom he gives autonomy he doesn't intrude into the autonomy or uh, Uh, the minute independence of living entity is so much otherwise you could have hypnotized all of us and made all of us into pure devotees overnight you could have done that <laughs> but he wants us to voluntarily commit to this process he will inspire us he will create all kinds of facilities to inspire us to continuously motivate us to practice bhakti but he doesn't force us because he does not want forced love right so when you are delegating some with somebody delegating some activity to somebody uh, do it in such a way that you don't suffocate them uh, you don't uh, completely strangle them uh, with your you know undue expectations but you can communicate your reasonable expectations and give them the necessary independence and autonomy to some degree at least autonomy little bit not so much depending on how much they deserve so this is thin balance does it make sense bro yeah mata ji expansion plenary expansion portion of plenary expansion <laughs> so these are often times uh, seen in the books basically uh, an expansion let me use sanskrit terminology uh, prakasha means the lord in his original form as the supreme lord krishna as a cohort by vrindavan he is completely potent he has immediate expansion like balaram so he is also fully potent but the mood is different uh, now when you come to incarnations or avatars they are the forms of the lord that descend from the spiritual world to material world they exhibit partial potency they don't exhibit complete potency when you say plenary expansion and all so they are not they don't exhibit complete potency they exhibit partial potency for a specific purpose 
so in short this is the thing you can refer to the 20th chapter of uh, madhya leela of chaitanya charitamrita for a detailed explanations of different types of incarnations and if you have more repetitive you can read lagu bhagavat amrita <laughs> um, yeah plenary expansion if you say it's partial it's partial exhibition of the lord's potency or leelas past times or powers so krishna is the supreme personality of godhead filled with all powers and all but rishabhadev is definitely the supreme personality of godhead but his exhibition of potency is is lesser much lesser compared to krishna or even ram and narasimha and other other forms the priests of nabhi maharaj sacrifice their pure vaishnavas it is because of their devotion their loving affection for the lord that they brought the lord down and showed him to nabhi maharaj they showed him he himself uh, could not see directly uh, it is because of the mercy of this pure vaishnavas that he got an opportunity to see dhrumaras by doing 6 months of tapasya his material desires are eradicated in the heart abhideya the process eradicates material desires pravishtah karnaram dhrena svanam bhava sarvaruham dhunoti shamalam krishna and of course dhrumaras also had profuse blessings of his guru narada muni his mother suniti he is guided by a pure vaishnavi mother suniti and a pure vaishnav guru dhruva uh, narada muni what else is required <laughs> thank you and he himself also did bhakti with great determination all three are there <coughs> any other question comment <coughs> we can have a combination of both not okay i will only hear no reading or i will only read some people are into that only reading no hearing no you should have a combination of both because both have their own advantages now when you are hearing you are hearing the uh, ex- hearing the past times of the lord or the philosophy of krishna consciousness mm, from a devotee who has understood it to some degree at least right you are hearing through their realizations through their understanding and you will get a perspective that you yourself might miss in your personal reading so hearing has its own uh, advantages but when you are hearing you are with the speaker you don't pause you can't pause in a youtube video you can pause <laughs> but uh, but here class is going on one hour two hours class is going on <laughs> and uh, you are hearing one point and you want to meditate on that one point Uh, then you may note it, uh, but by the time we are trying to process that point, he is making ten other points, right? So you are just taking in, taking in, <laughs> in in a katha. Then after that you can go and go back and reflect on them. But when you are reading, na, you read one paragraph, you got some thought. You are reading Rishabhadev, past them. Then immediately you remembered, oh, Lord Yagna also did like this, or so and so other other incarnation also did something similar. Ah, uh, fine. then you are reading out prahlad maharaj oh dhruva maharaj also had days of five only he got the darshan of the lord amazing so you can pause reflect introspect contemplate on this point and then move ahead in your reading 
so the reading facilitates that intermittent reflections uh, when you are hearing you are with the flow uh, like one hour two hours you are with the flow and after that you can <laughs> you can uh, reflect on these points later when you are revising and all and of course sometimes when we are reading only uh, we may understand according to our experience our knowledge our intelligence we'll miss a lot of perspectives in that which are not written explicitly when a devotee explains it then it it works but when you are hearing you are like you are only hearing then you may be little caught and caught in a comfort zone of course i'm not minimizing the process of shravanam at all <laughs> but uh, you can also put some effort that's why it is uh, said in bhag not my words it is said in bhagavatam tat shrinvan supatan vichara naparo bhaktya vimuchya narah he did not stop at shrinvan only shrinvan means hearing supatan nicely steady also bhagavatam must be heard shrinvan supatan nicely steady also not just patan supatan vicharana paro in contemplate also after hearing you should contemplate after reading also you should contemplate so that contemplation combined with hearing and reading will make you uh, more absorbed in that point but there may be some devotees who may not be able to read either because of their educational background or whatever they may not be able to read fine they can do only shravanam not not an issue actually speaking this reading is for kaliyuga before kaliyuga there is no reading business only hearing <laughs> all the books came into existence in the beginning of kaliyuga when they as they wrote the scriptures but before that all the scriptures are available in sound vibration only hearing existed <laughs> okay <laughs> hearing and vicharana so patan is only for kaliyuga <laughs> so in that sense if you want to if you want to be like the previous yuga people <laughs> you can stick to only hearing and of course even in kaliyuga also when somebody has does not have the ability to read so much they can stick to hearing but reading has its own advantage does it make sense this is our level of concept you are doing of course everything requires lots of mercy but we have to reflect we have to introspect we have to do nidhi dhyasana how many question 930 yeah thank you so much for coming and thank you for coming some devotees have some devotees get very much in fire they go very deep in scriptures but some things they do like they don't have so much like there is this yeah in the sense that it is because of one is how much is conscious is purified or how much is it is based on that one in the other thing yes when you say bhakti is not based on intelligence yeah intelligence is not the basis of bhakti but it has its role to play in bhakti gnana karma adi anavrutam our gnana should not avrutha should not cover bhakti but gnana is a part of bhakti uh, you see uh, a devotee is he not knowledgeable about krishna's nama rupa guna lila when a devotee has knowledge of krishna's nama rupa guna lila do you say that the devotee's bhakti is based on intelligence uh, krishna said buddha bhava samanvitah buddha bhava samanvitah means buddha you should have intelligence uh, and also bhava you should have emotion for the lord also so you cannot eliminate intelligence we should have that intellectual conviction at least as an educated young man you should also have that intellectual conviction about our philosophy about the process about what we are doing you should be convinced about it you should be able to convince others at least to some degree to some people so intelligence has its role to play so we use our intelligence to 
understand the philosophy of krishna consciousness and we engage our mind in cultivating that emotions for krishna love for krishna affection for krishna and we should also utilize our senses in service to krishna so use all your faculties in to connect with krishna intelligence is one important faculty that helps us connect with krishna but ultimately don't stop at intelligence buddha should lead to bhava buddha bhava samanvita ultimately your intellectual conviction of the philosophy of krishna consciousness should lead to an emotional bonding with krishna <laughs> so sadhana bhakti what is sadhana bhakti you are engaging your senses in krishna's service based on the shastra conjunctions and guru's recommendations right means intellectually you are convinced that this is good for me guru has given you teachings and you understood and processed the teachings you developed an intellectual conviction that yes this is important for me uh, this is good for me then you started engaging in uh, your senses and krishna service and this whole process will induce that loving emotions in you bhava is a result of sadhana so definitely bhakti is not based on intelligence but intelligence has an important role to play in the process of bhakti for our own personal conviction and for preaching also and for understanding the shastra also to some degree at least makes sense makes sense are you are you convinced about it you are using your intelligence you are not taking my words you are using your intelligence for <laughs> to process it Uh, what do you mean by observe some scriptures that you tell me first you you have made a point that intellectual people can observe with themselves in scriptures those are not cannot but what do you mean by observe some scriptures i thought you were talking about some aspect that we really got touched by how intellectual people observe scriptures there is intelligence role here this asking this is the point definitely intelligence is required for understanding philosophy to some degree but once you have a philosophical conviction philosophical foundation ready then uh, then we practice bhakti uh, based on faith also not just intelligence because everything you may not logically understand but somewhere you have to invest faith and that faith is the beginning of bhakti okay now intelligence is used to analyze to come to the essence in our shastrik study we are supposed to be saragrahis and not bharavahis you know, understand bharavahi means a burden carrier of so much of analytical knowledge with their intelligence they are analyzing so much and carrying that burden of analysis but that analysis need not be and should not be done at the cost of missing the essence so when you say absorption in shastra it is ultimately absorption in the essence of shastra essentially what the shastra is teaching us process of bhakti shravanam kirtanam smaranam padasevanam all that so use all your intelligence to embrace that essence of shastra and the intelligence is is uh, required to do some analysis to arrive at the essence and once you attain the essence when you get that essential understanding you will get absorbed in the process itself so intelligence has its role to play uh, but uh, too much of intelligence can also uh, be counterproductive in bhakti <laughs> so don't be overly analytical uh, at the cost of missing the essence makes sense yeah. yes. no no more we already asked one question <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, 
जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं यो वेत्ति तत्वत त्यक्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नैति मेति सोर्जन प्रोपत कोट्स दिस श्लोक आर एनी अदर श्लोक वेर कृष्ण गिव्स ए प्रॉमिस मामे वैश्यसी असंशय अंडेटेडली विल टेन मी योर बेसिक क्वेश्चन एज आई अंडरस्टैंड इज वाई वी कैंट सी दैट इन दिस करंट लाइफ वाई इट इज ऑलवेज ए वॉट इज पोस्ट डेटेड चेक वाई वी शुड आर पोस्ट डेथ चेक इज वाई इट ऑलवेज हैज टू बी विटनेस्ड इन फ्यूचर वाई नॉट नाउ one perspective of looking at it is that are we fully living up to the standard that the verse is speaking about janma karma ch me divyam yo evam yo veti tattvatah did we actually understand the divyata of krishna's janma and karma completely so so one way of evaluating the situation is are we total really on that level to experience that in this life that is one point second is we are experiencing that already to some degree at least may not be ultimate degree to some degree so it's not zero or one there is a lot of gray area between between so i may not be able to experience it or realize the realization that is promised in this shloka at this moment completely but at least to some degree i am getting a glimpse of it Mm-hmm. little bit of happiness so so kam kartu ma bhi many devotees who under, underwent some experiences in life either near death experiences or are uh, coming out of a very traumatic situation and then again gaining life etc we we may uh, just recollect their realizations uh, we can recollect their realizations that they could experience at least little fragmental portion of the the benediction promised in particular shlokas in the shastras so uh, one way is one way of looking at it is just evaluate am i really at that standard to experience what is being promised in the shloka second is am i not experiencing at all or am i experiencing at least to some degree little bit at least so there is a gradual realization gradual experience of the blessing there so we need to uh, see that progress we need to see that progression in the realization makes sense bro i don't know if i communicated well huh? uh, you can give mic to prabhu sir just to extend the so so many aspects of the communication process मूड इन विच आर वी ऑफरिंग दट लैम्प or studying a particular past time or hearing a particular past time am i interested in the incentive only uh, am i offering that lamp uh, with with full love and affection that lamp is representative of our little, little love for krishna do i have that so we need to actually evaluate um, is it just a physical activity or the emotion also is involved in that activity do i have that great emotion to get involved but now you are mentioning this point there are many other points also that bahu janma kare yadi shravana kirtan tabuna bhai be krishna pade prema dhan even if it is shravana and kirtan for hundreds and thousands of lifetimes you not get krishna prema so easily uh, now we may see the simpler promises or incentives given on one extreme we can also see the stricter points also there right on the other hand so we need offense only when there is offenseless chanting then we let in krishna prem but how offensive is my chant how sincere is my study of scriptures 
how loving is my offering of patram pushpam phalam toy my offering patram pushpam phalam toy so many times but bhaktiya krishna said the word bhaktiya two times how much bhakti do i have you may bhaktiya prayachati tadaham bhakti upahritam is that bhakti there i am sending 16 notes every day since the last 16 years but but uh, even 16 mantras did i completely get absorbed in did i chant with a full mood of helplessness and anxiety and dependence on krishna with full love for krishna so we need to evaluate the intensity of our bhakti intensity of our emotion purity of our intention actually speaking when the intentions are completely pure and when we are totally consistent satisfaction and bhakti is guaranteed bhagavad gita says i am not saying this ahai tuki apratiha ye yatma suprasidati suprasidati means complete satisfaction of heart is guaranteed when our bhakti is ahai tuki and apratihata is my bhakti really unmotivated uninterrupted is my bhakti really causeless and seamless is my bhakti completely devoid of any kind of expectations or material motives or agendas is my bhakti totally consistent and regular then satisfaction is guaranteed so we need to evaluate our absorption in the process our intensity in the process now this bulbs are there small so many bulbs are there and there is a hundred bulbs are there small small uh, combine they are illuminating this room to in a certain way but just put only one bulb switch off all the bulbs do we get the same intensity here uh, now there is one little candle glowing in that one corner so the devotee who is sitting on the other corner will they get that light to read a book but if i have a big stadium light here uh, then you can illuminate the entire room big room so both are lights both are producing light but the intensity is different similarly we are also chanting many pure devotees they are also chanting what is the difference they are chanting 16 notes i am chanting 16 notes it depends on the intensity of absorption it also depends the depends on the quality of feeling and the motive and the purity of intention all these are taken into account by krishna does it make sense bro thank you very much hari krishna grathara shrimad bhagavatam ki jay shrila prabhu ka hari krishna hari